In my last video, we talked about the dying landscape of PlayStation 5 scalpers who now have to sell their dozens of consoles that they've amassed at a loss because, well, okay. nobody's buying PS5s from scalpers anymore because supply is caught up with demand, so might as well just buy it. I'll be honest, if you're a scalper and you had the, you let this happen and you got, you got stuck holding the bag with this many PS5s, you are an idiot and it's your fault. You should have expected this. It's been over a year. Even the Wii, uh, like at this point, people were being able to buy them. Like, come on, man. You should have known this. You're an idiot. From your local store. And that brought a smile to my face. You know what else brings a smile to my face? The dying landscape of NFTs. This useless piece of technology that has yet to provide any sort of benefit to users. It's just the commodification of digital assets. Turning digital assets into investment opportunities by making... For, for dumb people who think they should be rich. Remember what I told you guys, that Seth Green NFT thing, that was the turning point. That was the point where as soon as that happened, that was it. Making what should be infinite supply into artificial scarcity, it's just nothing useful here. It's also bad for the environment. It's done more harm than good. It just makes things more inconvenient for the sake. Well, it, nobody wants NFTs. Like, NFTs provide no value add to the average user. That's why people don't give a shit about them. If you had, if, if there was a value add, then more people would use them. You have essentially another form of gambling that allows scammers, schemers, and con artists to engage in pyramid schemes, triangle schemes, in the hopes that they're able to amass a mass triangle pool of money schemes. that they can take a significant chunk out of while the majority end up making losses through these kinds of investments. All they are are digital receipts, the digital assets. You only own the receipts, not the digital asset itself. You don't own the JPEG. Yeah, but you have the receipt though, right? So it's the same thing as, uh, you know, like whenever I go to uh, I, I go to Best Buy and I buy a phone and I have the receipt for the phone. That means I own the technology behind the phone. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's how it works. Jesus. That anyone cool can download from the internet. It's just all silly shenanigans that contributes nothing mm -hmm. to society, nothing useful. And so after NFTs no, peak in late 2021 to early 2022, it's kind of crashed significantly when it comes to interest surrounding it. Google searches. So, somebody says, I work for a company that is adding value with NFTs, so not all NFTs are trash, just saying. Do you want me to upset you by asking what do you think that value is that NFTs uniquely provide that was not already that did not already exist before NFTs? What is this what is this imaginary value that that NFTs provide? Ownership of digital books? Why would anybody care about that? You already ha don't don't you already have the uh like what's that thing called? Uh, where, where like Kindle, yeah, you already have Kindle. Like, what? Why would somebody care about this more than Kindle? You can't sell your Audible books and you don't own them, much like Steam games. Well, you can sell your account. Uh, that's not easy. No. So, so why? Okay, so let's think about this, right? So, if you're selling digital ownership of a book, I'm just saying, work for a company that's making changes in the space with NFTs. But that's not a change because it adds no value to the customer. Like you, you're, you're, there's nothing new that's being added here. Why, like, why would somebody use this and not Kindle? Do you think somebody's going to go through and try to resell a book for $3? Being able to own your and sell your items isn't valuable. It's not because once you get to a certain amount of value, like how much is a book? How much is a book on Kindle, guys? They're $10. So if you're selling a book, so it's got to be less than ten dollars, right? Like logically, it's got to be less than ten dollars, uh, free to ten dollars, six to twenty dollars. Yeah, sure. Let, let's say it's ten dollars. If you're selling it, it's got to be less than ten dollars. So it's probably going to be eight dollars because if you're selling it at ten dollars, why wouldn't somebody just buy it from the person who's making the books? Like it just doesn't really make any sense. Another uh, author makes money every time the book sells. With the current books and Kindles, you can't do that, and the author never makes another dime. So 
your entire business idea is completely backwards because your focus is on is not on the end user. Every business that is successful is successful because its prime directive is improving the experience for the end user. So whether the author is successful or not, or the author makes money or not, is irrelevant because that doesn't matter to the actual user. We have e-readers that are $3, partner with Ingram, which is publisher. Oh, I'm sure the end user does have an improved experience though. Well, here, let me ask you this. Why would, some, why would you need an NFT to sell a book? Like a virtual book. Because couldn't you just have a token that's associated with the account and you just transfer the token? So we talk a lot about digital ownership here and we talk about that a lot. What I'm saying is that digital ownership doesn't exist. There will never be any value in the scarcity of digital ownership. The only time it exists is inside of some form of like a video game because there's articles, artificial scarcity that's created. Nobody gives a shit about digital scarcity. Digital ownership means nothing if you can copy paste. Yeah, that's it. Like it's just, it, it literally is, is just it. There's no value to the user to have a, to, to own a picture versus have a saved version of the picture. Like it's functionally the same thing. I, I went off on a tangent, but yes. And whatnot when it comes to daily users and when it comes to daily trading. And even companies like Meta are seeing the writing on the wall. Back in March of 2023, it was reported that Meta is winding down support for NFTs on Instagram and Facebook, yeah. two of the biggest social media platforms in the world. Here's how one of the higher ups at Meta put it. This is Stefan Casriel. He tweeted some product news across the company. We're looking closely at what we prioritize to increase our focus. We're winding down digital collectible nfts for now to focus on other ways to support creators people and businesses nfts i feel are intrinsic yeah, of course because that's what people care about to not talk to you more in depth about because you'll have a lot of good ideas they're smart but um uh, this isn't like other nft scams i promise if i had a dollar for every single time somebody told me that it's not like other nft scams i could almost afford a board apes nft so number one number two i'm not saying that it's a scam i don't think that what you're doing is a scam uh, I never said that. I'm not even implying it. All I'm saying is that the idea of digital ownership is a novelty and not a actual value. Uh, I think this has become, it, it, it is just so readily obvious in every single way. And the entire market of people has, uh, have pretty much decided this. Like owning, owning a picture on the internet is functionally the same as owning a saved version of that picture on the internet. There is no functional difference between these two things. And because there's no functional difference, then nobody cares. It's the same thing with anything else. Tied to the metaverse and meta as a company is so heavily invested and so bullish on the metaverse that they renamed their entire company from Facebook to, to meta. meta. And even these guys are like, as far as NFTs go. That's like somebody who gets like a tattoo of um, fucking like, let me think of Kanye West. You know, think about getting a, ta like getting a tattoo of Kanye West. Like, oh man, that didn't go too well. Or like a tattoo of Enron or... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, oh, um, <laughs> TSM, right? I mean, do social media platforms it's just not working out it's just not worth focusing on what does that tell you about the landscape and while it's only gotten worse since as reported by coindesk here via this article published on april 20th 2023 the headline speaks for itself nft marketplaces sales users drop to lows not seen what a surprise that this this thing right here isn't actually worth any money I thought the world was having a collective fever dream for the last two years, but it seems like now people are finally waking up. Yes, it's worth nothing. Since 2021, Dune data shows. As I mentioned before, late 2021 and early 2022, that's when NFTs peaked. That's when there was a lot of hype and uh, a lot of intrigue surrounding them before it just crashed and fell off. Before that, though, NFT sales were pretty low. And to get back oh, to... Oh, yeah, nobody gave a shit about them until after that. Yeah, I mean, it, of course, somebody in chat said this, okay? For example... 
CS GO skins have actual monetary value even on the large scale that skins are selling for tens of thousands of dollars and they are just pixels in the game just because the market is user driven. Let me explain why that's different. I understand that a lot of people compare this to CS GO skins. Number one, the reason why CS GO skins are popular is because CS GO is popular. If CS GO died, the skins would be worth nothing. So they are, they are not, it, it, like if you think about this very, very fucking metaphorically, they are not a fiat currency because they are backed up by the success of the game. Number one. Number two, there's scarcity of usage. So for example, if you have a CSGO skin, you are the only person who can use that skin because you own it. And, or and other people that also own the skin, and there are only so many of those people, and that number is dictated by the developer. It's not like you can just go in and then just paint your gun the exact same way in some sort of forge thing or some skin selector and make it the exact same. It doesn't work that way. So because there is enforced scarcity inside of the game and certain people unlock a functionality that is otherwise not available, that's what gives it value. But what truly gives it value is the success of CSGO. If CSGO is not successful, every CSGO skin you have goes down to zero. That's the way it works. So, uh, again, that's completely different than like a picture NFT. Because a picture NFT, if somebody saves that picture on their computer, they functionally have the exact same rights that you do, and they can do the exact same things that you do. You see kind of how this works and how, because you can't, like, for example, I can't take a screenshot of somebody's CSGO skin and then, uh, like, fuck it, not all. Oh, ho, ho, that's how it works. Um, and, and so I can't take a picture of somebody's CSGO skin and then go and turn it into a skin in CSGO. You're wasting breath in some of the chat here. Yeah, I know. I, I get it. I know. I did consulting work for an investing firm on NFTs. You kept running into the same wall with some people. Yeah, I know. It's sad. Uh, why did the Spectral Tiger TCG go up in price? Inflation. So the Spectral Tiger went up in price. Do you want to know why it went up in price? Simple. Because World of Warcraft is a popular game. Once again, the Spectral Tiger is not a fiat currency. It is backed up by the success of World of Warcraft. Number one. Number two, I can't take a screenshot of the Spectral Tiger and then put it on my character in the game. If I could do that, and everybody who could take a picture of their Spectral Tiger, like, let's say, theoretically, you could go to the website that sells Spectral Tigers, and you could take a picture of it with your phone, and then you could use fucking chat GPT to say, hey, make my mount just like this. Do you know what would happen to the value of Spectral Tigers? Here. It would go like this. Go just... Actually, no, no. I, I, this, this is wrong. It would go just like this. Actually, no. It would go just like this. It would go down to zero. So, so that's, that's the reason. So if Dr. Disrespect's game is successful and popular, then NFTs would make sense by your logic? No, because it's not successful because they're NFTs. It's successful because they are digital assets in an online world that is popular. They don't have to be NFTs because if they did, then CSGO skins couldn't exist right now. NFTs are solving a problem that nobody has. I've said before that if there's a good game that is an NFT game, I will play it. I don't, I, I don't hate NFTs. I don't care about them. I just want to play a good game. It doesn't matter to me. We have so many NFT bros. Uh, you're preaching to the choir. These dudes brought this idea. It needs to be validated. Listen, man. Uh, you, you can use texture swap and wow all the time. Yeah, but you get banned for it, right? Like there's there's accountability like you you, you can't realistically do texture swap and, and you also you can't other people can't see it only you can see it 
Nothing public ledger. It depends on licensing, distribution on it. Nobody gives a shit. You know, because it oh, will license on it. It's not validation. It's just new tech, and some people are abusing it, but there is value in it. Well, let me know whenever that value is, is realized. Because being able to resell a book, NFTs did not invent this. Being able to resell a digital item, NFTs did not invent this. That's just how it is. Argument made by these people are that NFT technology would change the ownership of CS of how CSGO skins work, but they don't have an argument. They don't understand it's the exact skin, exact same. I have my skin until the server shuts down. Well, you don't though, because I, I think that I don't know about how the ownership of it is, but couldn't they just turn that off? Like, couldn't they just ban you if you use the skin? any user of that skin or just make it invalid to to function with the game yeah so you don't even really own it you just you own a receipt that says that you 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 had a transaction that that meant that you own the right to use it as nft it's on the chain they can't change that they can functionally change it and the functional part is the only real part that matters. Because if you cannot functionally affect something, it's not real. Here we go. So for any troll comments, it's not troll. And, and again, I've been saying this. I got shit in 2021. In 2020, whenever I completely said this entire idea was fucking stupid, I said the same thing about crypto. I bought and sold crypto many times before for different reasons. Uh, I'm not saying crypto has no value. I am saying that crypto does not have intrinsic value. So, of course, and I got so much shit for this. And now I am finally right, just like I said I would be right. Here we are, two years later, and it feels fucking good. Man, it feels good. Place before that big hype in terms of user numbers and sales. Like that, that just goes to highlight that the landscape is not improving one bit. It's not seeing some kind of recovery right now. As Coindesk reports here, the number of unique users across top NFT marketplaces, including Blur, OpenSea, and Looks Rare, has been steadily declining over the past seven days and dropped to 7,805 on April 19th. So let's see here. Past seven days dropped 7,000 April 19th. OpenSea, low since July. Wow, that's a lot. What's the most they've had? It hasn't been that low since July 31st, 2021. Wow. When the number of unique users on OpenSea and other marketplaces was recorded at 7,455 unique users. This whole NFT landscape is a scam of a video game that players are deciding to drop out of, essentially, is the metaphor I can put out there. Many users are realizing that this is not a compelling or rewarding activity to engage in. They're realizing that interest across the board is falling. Well, eventually, people get like you play hot potato with enough people and eventually someone's like oh it's not hot anymore i don't want it like didn't logan paul or some guy buy an nft for it was like uh four hundred thousand dollars and now it's worth eight dollars oh god Ooh. It, the thing is that NFTs are like they survive entirely on hype. So the moment that you have a few NFTs go down or look stupid, then the whole thing falls apart. Cleaning from major companies like Meta, and it's just one of those long term things that is just not worth staying on. This theory? is a train yeah. that right now seems to be headed off a cliff. I also no find it to be very telling that um, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, two people who um, it seems like they, uh, you know, you look at the most richest people in the world, these guys are always on that list, right? And it's just so crazy that like those guys are like, yeah, this shit's stupid. So like, hmm. 
But there's one guy on Twitter who's worth like $100 million, and he says that they're great. So let's listen to him. Reduction in the number of users as well as just how active remaining users have been will obviously result in lower sales. So sales across NFT marketplaces have also dipped over the last seven days with 16,149 sales recorded it's on April body, 19th. Yeah. The last time the number of sales was that low was on November 9th, 2021, when there were 12,910 sales. Keep in mind that this is across all marketplaces that we're seeing less than 8,000 users overall and less than, I mean, just a little over 16,000 sales overall. If you think about a live service video game having under 8,000 players and with this kind of sales figures, you think, man, this game is not doing good. That's kind of what it feels like with the NFT landscape, doesn't it? The article continues, both top marketplaces, OpenSea and Blur, are seeing notable declines in unique users and sales. And there are a number of users on Twitter who have highlighted visually the kind of decline we're seeing with NFTs. Here's Giancarlo, for example, tweeting, there's been an incredible drop off in unique NFT buyer slash sellers in the last week. Less than 10,000 wallets now on all platforms and going to the image that he presented you can see right here that the different colors represent the different marketplaces and you can see this big dip right here this is april 17th you can see just how much lower this oh yeah because eventually people just get used to uh they get uh they get bored of it that's it i mean it makes sense bar right here is compared to even January of 2023. And here's another chart by Hill Dobby that goes back even further, showing comparisons between now and back in 2021. OpenSea trader count down to pre-summer 2021 NFT boom numbers. Yikes, emoji face. You can see right here, indeed, a line is drawn from where so we're So they were peaking at almost like 80,000 transactions. At And you can see that sales are equal to roughly that of July 2021, right before that huge uh, spike happened in uh, late 2021 to early 2022. Mm -hmm. Going back to the Coindesk article, it is further broken down by individual major NFT marketplaces. Zooming in on marketplaces like Blur and OpenSea and looking at the data there, you can see that the decline is tangible, it is palpable. As for why this kind of decline is happening, well, Coindesk reached out to a number of marketplaces and NFT analysts and whatnot, and they've gotten responses like, possible causes include high gas price and tax season liquidity issues. This is a quote from Sea Launch, who admit that unique daily users are effectively at a low amount historically on both marketplaces. And scrolling further down, here's a- Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that probably has a, an impact, but probably not that big of an impact quote from uh, Hill Dobby, who shared similar sentiments with Coindesk. I think it's a combination of factors. Like, couldn't you just look at what it was like, especially with taxes? Couldn't you just look at what it was like in the past two years during April and just kind of have the same thing? Like, let me see it. There's 649 right now. Where's the graph? Uh, let's see here. January... I think, yeah, this is probably somewhere around April. Okay. July. Yeah, it does seem like it goes down a lot every single year at about this same time, to be fair. But the biggest factors, in my opinion, are that not much interesting has been happening in NFTs lately and rapidly rising gas prices aren't helping. Gas prices, for those who don't know, are fees charged when engaging in blockchain transactions. The higher the gas price, the less people be incentivized to do trades because it'll cost them. And while I do believe that that isn't helping, I believe the primary reason for why NFTs are crashing is because not much interesting. Yeah, people aren't talking about them anymore. The reason, again, these things survive survived their oxygen was hype has been happening in nfts lately frankly i don't believe nfts have ever been interesting we got some celebrity no, endorsements were. here and there early on that made people curious about it but once people realize their true nature essentially investment opportunities these gambles in a very speculative market via receipts that are linked to you know like digital assets like jpegs and audio files and whatever 
and you don't actually own those assets, but rather you own receipts that mean absolutely nothing, just like receipts to a piece of the moon, that's when people are like, what does this do for me? Oh, nothing. All right, moving on. And one of the after effects of all of this- Yeah, I it think that's what it is. It's what does this do for me? That's always been what the problem is with NFTs, is they provide no functional value. Is that the value of specific NFT types and brands- it's Just like stock market, no different. NFTs are like buying stock in a company that's not real are falling as well right here for example decrypt.co reports that board apes and crypto punks fall below a hundred thousand dollars in value as nft momentum stalls blue chip nft projects are losing value as some trading metrics across nft marketplaces fell to nearly two year lows and scrolling down yeah and i guarantee you this is going to cause more people to stop using it because like as soon as people start seeing blood in the water with nfts Everybody else that has them right now is going to start trying to sell as fast as they can to get out of the market. So like as soon as you start seeing things go down, it's like failure begets more failure, success begets more success. Here you'll it's find further details. Yeah. Floor prices for blue chip NFT collections, CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club both fell below $100,000 worth of Ethereum this week for the first time in months as the broader NFT market slumped to trading stats not seen in years. People are losing faith and hope, and so the entire landscape is just the floor is getting lower and lower. And while all of this is happening, keep in mind that the concept of the metaverse, which I think is intrinsically tied to NFTs, as NFTs are... Well, yeah, you need a metaverse in order to create a value for NFTs. Like, that is the ultimate value proposition are a big part of making metaverses real and commodifying digital assets and whatnot. The metaverse itself is also a landscape that is not seeing a whole lot of traction, which is why we're seeing headlines like this. If there's one thing AI has done for us, it's killed Zuck's metaverse, as the information reports that Meta seems to be pulling back from ever mentioning the buzzword metaverse, which was... Well, the reason why AI is taking over from, uh, you know, everybody's interest from the metaverse is because AI provides a tangible value. You didn't have an AI cat girl with giant milkers before and the AI made this happen. Okay, that's value. You already had a picture of a dog, of a 16-bit dog. You don't need another one. Massive value, yeah, that's the difference. Meta's favorite buzzword last year mm -hmm. and the whole, you know, etymology of the company's new name meta meta is now focused on ai and ai is actually a technology that i would like to see explored i feel like it does have a lot of uses in video games who have seen ai upscaling provide major performance boosts to games while still oh yeah they've done that with trailers and stuff like that they did that with like the wrath of the lich king trailer they scaled it up to 8k the vast majority of its visual fidelity and stuff like that there still have to be regulations and lines that have to be drawn so that ai can be used ethically but i think the technology itself can be useful in many respects and can make certain processes better can enhance things in ways that i think will well, it, again it's because ai provides a direct obvious and tangible benefit in a way that uh, that, that nfts do not that's the reason why people are still using crypto is that like you can still use crypto to buy and sell drugs more easily than using USD? Straight up. Like you can do it for like buying, like if you want to buy something in Russia right now and there's sanctions, you can use crypto. That's like a direct and obvious value. There is a thing that you can use and it has value because of this reason. However, with NFTs, there is no actual value. Don't give away the secrets. Yeah, yeah. Nobody knew about this until now. Crypto is good for tax evasion too. Um, I hate to tell you this, but I had like a two-hour conversation with uh, uh, like uh, like it's like a, the people that manage my money basically, and they said that if you are trading crypto right now, you would better make sure that every single one of your fucking tax documents has periods at the end of everything like there's no nothing misspelled because 
anybody who does this shit is like immediately in the uh, in the fucking crosshairs of the IRS right now. So yeah, I I, I think that I think there's a lot of people that knew that. Too many. allow us to be more productive and that will just improve technology and stuff like that. Uh, there's an exploration there that I think will pave the road to beneficial things for society. Uh, but NFTs, metaverse, all that jazz, I just don't get it. Like uh, they've yet to provide any company exploring this landscape has yet to provide a single good explanation for how the metaverse and how uh, the adoption of NFTs and blockchain and whatnot will benefit us in any way, shape, or form yeah, in a real beyond, way. you know, essentially serving to line the pockets of corporations while screwing over many people who will invest in this kind of stuff and the majority will end up losing money. And it's not just Meta pulling out of this stuff. Companies like Microsoft and Disney are reversing their bets on the metaverse. And the well, because also, uh, you know, again, it's not popular anymore. It's literally that simple. People just want to follow what's popular. And AI took over, and nobody gives a shit about NFTs or Metaverse anymore. The fact that Metaverse... And, and yeah, you're right. It never was popular. You're totally right. The only reason why it seemed to be popular is the people that had a vested financial interest in it knew that the best way to make it have value is to talk about it constantly. It's like one NFT fan sounds like 10 NFT fans and one like 20 normal people sound like one normal person. Versus are also kind of crashing and dying out won't help the NFT landscape, which could have potentially been boosted if the concept of the metaverse had gained some traction, which it isn't. So yeah, suffice to say that NFTs and metaverse are mm -hmm. seeing a kind of worst case scenario where the masses are not interested in this stuff. I it's failing why. to garner mass adoption. It's only being cheerled by niche groups and enthusiasts. Well, it, it's being cheerled by people that have a vested financial interest in its success. Those are the people that are trying to promote it. But yeah, everyone else, the masses just don't understand what it is, don't really seem to care for it. Um, when they do understand what it is, uh, yeah, it, it's just, uh, it's a fad in the truest sense of the word until they find a way to make this stuff actually useful mm -hmm. and not just financially lucrative for corporations. It'll remain a fad. And it's really not hard to see how we ended up here, why NFTs are well, diving. we didn't end up here. We've been here. It's just that people are now just realizing it. And That's the, the interest, the number of users, and the number of sales surrounding it are getting lower and lower. People are ultimately not missing out on anything by missing out on NFTs and metaverse yep. in their current state, in the way they're currently being presented, in the ways that they're currently being utilized. Well, at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on I'm the current state it, of boys. NFTs. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, Man. and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. Man, I love seeing this. Oh, man. This is just, uh, it, it is really something special to see. This is great. Dr. Disrespect is screwed. I don't think that anybody is going to not play the game because of NFTs, but also nobody is going to play the game because of NFTs. NFTs cannot be used as a intrinsic value add. They have to be something that actually matters, uh, like something that, that that's like a, it's like an outcome of the game. Yeah, it cannot be the main focus of the game. Can I explain why Metaverse is uh, named Meta and why Meta is related to artificial intelligence? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Like, I, that's not the point. Now, I feel like they renamed to Meta before Metaverse became really big. Like, I'm just saying in general that it's not that big of a surprise that you see a, a lot of people moving away from NFTs because there's just been so many NFT scams. It just makes people look bad. Like, why would you want to do an NFT project right now when even if you're trying to do something good, everybody's just going to call you a scammer? So, like, is it really worth the, um, is it worth the PR hit to do this? Obviously fucking not. So weird that my digital certificate of authenticity for this shitty JPEG isn't retaining or appreciating in value. 
Yeah, I know. I can see that. But that's what you fucking get. I mean, again, the people that were spending money on this kind of stuff are, are just absolute fucking morons. I think anybody who actually thought that this was... The, the thing is, I feel like almost every single person that bought and sold NFTs was only buying and selling them just to make more money. So if that's what you were doing, I think that's totally fine. You're not an idiot. If you made 20 grand off of it, that's great. But if you got stuck holding the bag, it's because you got lost in the sauce and you forgot the fact that you were dealing with Monopoly money. And you're not even dealing with Monopoly money. You're dealing with pictures of Monopoly money. So if you got if you got stuck holding the bag of a bunch of Monopoly money and you're looking for sympathy you're not going to find it okay Put an nft picture of you to uh pretend i'll end up losing it all that's what you get it's mostly luck yeah of course i just brought trump series two cards well the trump series two cards might be some of the only ones that actually go up in value i don't know i i don't own any <laughs> maybe i should get some let's see here i've only got my cousin to understand this See, the reason why, again, I, I don't want to go too far because I've talked about NFTs like a hundred times, right? But like the reason why people don't want to understand uh, th this type of thing is because they don't want to. They don't want to confront the idea that they're not going to be rich by selling JPEGs on the internet. They want to live in a fantasy world where they're going to be on a yacht, chilling with a bunch of fucking babes, bunch of models, popping bottles, doing whatever the fuck they want. And you're going to be poor because you didn't own a picture of a gorilla. That's the world that they want to live in. So whenever you tell them that, <laughs> whenever you tell them that like, hey, this probably isn't going to happen. You can't expect them to be like, oh, wow, that's quite a good argument. Okay, so you're saying that all of the reasoning behind this is, oh, okay, so I'm an idiot. Okay, I get it. So just by the fact that they're into it in the first place makes them an idiot. And you know that there is no greater and deeper abyss than trying to convince an idiot that they're an idiot. It's never going to happen. Because they're never going to admit it. So yeah, it's a waste of fucking time. Uh, NFTs are a scam. The only one did it right was BPI. Uh, one of his conservative tradition uh, physical artists turned digital. I have no idea who that is. All I'm saying is that uh, this should be a surprise to nobody. Uh, I, I think that NFTs especially, you know, encapsulated what I think a lot of people, you know, these are boring, lazy, stupid people who think that they're going to make it rich and they deserve to be rich because they're smarter than everybody else. Listen, buddy, if you're sitting there buying and selling pictures of dogs on the Internet, you're not smarter than anybody. You're getting farmed. Yeah, listen, bucko. Exactly. Uh, what do you think about the New World furry mask? Oh, I have it. Yeah, I've already got it. My friend wants NFTs to succeed, not for the money, but for less centralized control of currency. I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, is the premise beyond board ape shit? Not having a centralized currency is a bad thing. I think you need a centralized currency. We've had decentralized currencies in the past. Every single one of them has been a disaster. There is a reason why it's centralized. I understand that there are these people that don't know anything about history that are so desperately wishing to go back to the 1800s so they can get scammed by the exact same things that robber barons scammed people with. They, they want to go right back there because they never paid attention in history class. All of the NFT scams are all 1800 scams. Like printing extra crypto, like making extra ones, uh, trying to sell the different people under the table. All of these things have already happened before. So yeah, there's a reason why it's centralized. That's the OnlyFans family back in 1800. The Fed and U.S. government are terrorist organizations. Well, I mean, you better listen to them then. Uh, yeah, but make it crypto and let the transparent government rule it. Well, I, I don't think that it's... Uh, no, no system is perfect, but I'd certainly rather... Um, 
Uh, I, I'd rather rely on the government than just some fucking uh, some some algorithm with no no way to enforce it. You know, centralized. So do you have anything to compare it to? Yeah, exactly. Or delusional if they think Bitcoin will have any value if USD would collapse. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's actually a very good point. The only reason why Bitcoin has any value is because it has value that is, uh, it, 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 its value is related to a currency. If you couldn't buy and sell Bitcoin, it would have no value. Yeah, the only reason why it has value is because it's connected to real currencies.